just when to have fun was dreaming, one village was occupied. In fact, at three or four in the morning, one village had been successfully surrounded by the basic militia camp in Zhongbao town, a full battalion of troops. The basic militia battalion won Wang village without any effort, and the whole Wang village is celebrating its liberation at this moment. People danced the Yanko to the sound of gongs and drums. Yanko is a symbol. It means turning over. It means the farmers are the masters of the country. And Yanko also means democracy and dictatorship. People are singing. The sky in the liberated areas is bright, and people in the liberated areas like it very much. Yes, people love being occupied and liberated. There is no reason for the farmers to be unhappy. It is also the tradition of the Zhongbao Commune to use occupation to review occupation and liberation to commemorate liberation. As the director of the Revolutionary Committee of Zhongbao Commune, Canon Hong has always been an avid war fan. He participated in the Yangtze River crossing campaign. He occupied Nanjing with the iron flow of a million heroic divisions. It was the only war of his life. But unfortunately, as soon as he became addicted to war, the whole country was liberated. The enemy is gone. The war is gone. However, it doesn't matter. If no enemy, we can invent enemies. As long as there is ambition and motivation, the enemy can be created. The people can and should have their imaginary enemies. In order to deal with this enemy, Canon Hong gave himself a mission, and he personally served as the militia battalion commander in Zhongbao Town. Strictly speaking, this is not allowed. It violates the basic principles of organization and administration. However, Canon Hong insisted. In a sense, Canon Hong's role as militia battalion commander has a scientific basis. As far as all people are soldiers, it is completely in line with the normal establishment of militarization. What is the country? A country is first and foremost a national army. Then, going down, one province is equal to one corps, one region or district is equal to one division, and one county is equal to one regiment. In this way, a commune is of course a battalion. As a battalion, Zhongbao Town successfully launched many meaningful wars after Canon Hong became the battalion commander. It can be said that the military exploits were outstanding. The most famous is, of course, the simulated Yangtze crossing. Every year on April the 23rd, the day when the Chinese People's Liberation Army occupied Nanjing, Canon Hong would organize the members of the entire commune and at the same time organize the farm boats, poles, Orcs and sails of the entire commune. Why? Canon Hong wants to command the Yangtze River crossing campaign. He wants to lead millions of heroes across the river on the water of Sanipi Lake. Every April 23rd is the festival of the Zhongbao commune, and no one gets to sleep that night. That night, the water of Sanipi Lake in Zhongbao Town was calm. It was the darkness before dawn and the silence before the war. Suddenly, two red flares illuminated the water surface of Sanipi Lake, and the flares were the order. Sanipi Lake suddenly slammed into the sky, and the army lurking on the shore of the lake slammed into action. The densely packed torches were lit, and the water surface of the vast Sanipi Lake suddenly became a sea of fire, bright red. Under the light of the torches, thousands of bows were launched on the Sanipi Lake, and thousands of sails competed for the flow. All the farm boats and all the members of the commune launched a fierce attack on Nanjing. At its peak. The number of people who attacked Nanjing was more than twenty thousand. Of course, it is still a battalion, an independent battalion. At dawn, the independent battalion occupied the south bank, Nanjing. Twenty giant haystacks prepared in advance were lit, and the fire was raging, and the flames were soaring into the sky. The fire lit up the sky and lit up the newborn sun.
Nanjing was turned into ruins in the raging fire. Once again, the enemy perished, and we were once again victorious. April twenty-three happens every year, which means that the Yangtze River crossing campaign also happens every year. Victories are stars in the sky, too many to count. Of course, the Yangtze River crossing campaign was discontinued later, mainly because of casualties and the sacrifice of two people. Two girls who could not swim at all fell into the water in the extremely chaotic war and did not flow up until the afternoon of the next day and were returned to Zhongbao Town by the waves. They are martyrs," said Captain Hong. The County Civil Affairs Bureau did not approve, not ratified. Captain Hong was criticized by his superiors. Criticism from higher-level leaders has always been like this. It should reflect the spirit of dialectics, and it is divided into two parts. On the one hand, the higher-level leaders deny the mistakes in Captain Hong's work, and on the other hand, the higher-level leaders also affirmed the general direction that Captain Hong insisted on. Under the guidance of the general direction, Captain Hong corrected his war thinking in time, and he pulled the war from the water to the land. Of course, the theme will not change. That is liberation. At the end of 1976, taking advantage of the slack in winter, Captain Hong decided to liberate one village this year. At the same time, all military operations, such as foot marches and target shooting, are placed here. Military operations have the characteristics of military operations, that is, strict secrecy. Wang Village didn't know anything about it in advance. Wu Mailin was miserable. She was called by Cannon Hong from the bed. Wu Mailin didn't wash her face, brush her hair, or brush her teeth. She was wrapped in blankets and looked very embarrassed. Fortunately, Wu Mailin was not confused. She made a verbal review to Cannon Hong as soon as possible. She admitted that she let her guard down and did not make a corresponding and active defense. Cannon Hong did not blame her. Although he hadn't slept well last night, Cannon Hong's spirits were exceptionally good. Cannon Hong waved his hand and said, "It's not that you are incompetent; it's that the Communist Army is too cunning." This is a well-known movie line, which was quoted by Cannon Hong. Had a heroic spirit, a belief in victory, and a humorous effect. The guys all laughed. Cannon Hong also laughed broadly. Cannon Hong smiled, and Wu Mailin's verbal review was passed. The atmosphere in Wang Village became warm, and every household opened the door. They celebrate liberation, welcome relatives, boil water, boil eggs, set off firecrackers, and beat drums and gongs. Early in the morning, the smoke is curling up, and the fire is in full swing. When the loudspeaker sounded, the sound of guns and drums and firecrackers sounded. Duan Fang sat on the bed, far away, but he could hear it clearly. It was not a dream; it was real. Wang Village was occupied, and as a successful military operation, Cannon Hong and his army pushed the atmosphere of Wang Village to a climax in advance. Although there were still some days before the Chinese New Year, in the eyes of the young people in Wang Village, the atmosphere is much better than that of the Chinese New Year. Where can there be such tension and excitement during the Chinese New Year? Wang Village was fully controlled by the militia battalion. They are an iron army of the people, with three disciplines and eight points of attention. They are a people's army. Facts also illustrate this point. The Battlefield Express concluded that in the days when Wang Village was liberated, not a single woman in Wang Village was molested. Battlefield Express also said that Wang Village did not even lose a dog or a chicken. 
This is amazing. The Battlefield Express further pointed out, on the contrary, the number of soldiers who did good deeds for the common people reached 136, an increase of 5.73% compared to the liberation of Lee Village in 1975. Of course, Battlefield Express absolutely embodies the spirit of dialectics. It examines its own shortcomings. It said, Zhang Weimin, a soldier from the 2nd Company, the 4th Platoon, and the 1st Squad, scolded a poor farmer uncle of the 3rd Production Team in one village, saying that the uncle was a son of a bitch. One loud voice and one small voice. Zhang Weimin got an informed criticism from the battalion headquarters. The battalion headquarters decided to withhold two bullets of Zhang Weimin during the live ammunition exercise as a warning. Wang Village had posts every few steps. The barriers were fortified, and suddenly there was an aggressive tension. The boys and girls were so excited as hell. As they walked, they lightened their footsteps in unison and kept turning their heads. Even if they went to the river to wash rice, even if they went to the restroom, they felt that they had a feather letter in their arms. They are working, secretly participating in the revolution long ago, and underground. Their every move has meaning out of nowhere, done in the midst of white terror. It's witty, courageous, and hard work. Therefore, each of them is a thief, and the eyeballs are on the left side of the eye sockets for a moment, and then on the right side of the eye sockets for fear of exposing as a target. They also worry about the mines under their feet and a cold shot behind the old locust tree. Sneaky is so appealing, it's literally calling. They can wait to be arrested immediately and be rescued on the verge of being beaten by the enemy. However, no one arrests them, which is a shame. They are waiting. They kept turning their heads as they walked. They firmly believe that there is hope. There must be. If it goes on like this, there will definitely be a black muzzle aimed at their small waists, whispering, Don't move! They will be arrested. How heartwarming this is! Such a moving assumption is actually full of contradictions. On the one hand, the militia battalion imagined Wang Village as an enemy and is the last stronghold. Wang Village, on the other hand, they regard the militia battalion as an enemy. Why does it matter? The people and the people's army can do exactly that. It's not a one-man game, it's the nation that makes it happen. Wu Manling didn't like this kind of game at all. However, she will not resist the instruction of her superiors, and she will strictly implement them without discount. Senior leaders can rest assuredly on this point. During the occupied days, Wu Manling's workload suddenly increased. She transferred Duan Fang up from the pig farm, and together with the three soldiers of the militia battalion, he was especially responsible for the security work of Cannon Hong. Cannon Hong's marching bed was placed on the rostrum of the brigade headquarters, which was not only Cannon Hong's personal bedroom, but also the highest command of this military activity. How about Duan Fang and them? A floor was laid under the empty brigade. The four young men were huddled together. It seems that Cannon Hong has a good impression of Duan Fang, and he gave Duan Fang a few fists in the chest as soon as they met. Duan Fang was particularly strong, and his chest was buzzed by the fists of Cannon Hong. Cannon Hong said loudly, The young man is good. The conditions are good. Wu Maling sighed lightly. Indeed, not bad. Cannon Hong gave Duan Fang another fist in the chest and said, Your future is boundless. Wu Manling's heart froze. Your future is boundless. She was too familiar. This is Cannon Hong's comment on Wu Manling, and it was promised in Wu Manling's ears. After so many years, Wu Manling has never forgotten. She printed these four words in her mind and cherished them extremely. In private, she tied herself to these four words, which had a specific meaning, specific, unique, 
and another way of saying Wu Man Lin. Now, can and Hong give these four words to Duan Fang so easily that Wu Man Lin inevitably had some thought, although given to Duan Fang. Of course, Wu Man Lin didn't show it and said politely, He's serving as a guard for Director Hong, I'm at ease. After speaking, Wu Man Lin suddenly had a bad prediction in her heart, a faint disappointment, and even is desperate. Did Canon Hong forget what he said? But Wu Mai Ling still gained something. Duan Fang became a security guard. At night, he slept in the brigade and slept very close to Wu Mai Ling under the same roof. In fact, such a pattern is still not good. It is close at hand, but it is still far away, a bit torturing. Should I go check the room? This is the case in movies. In war-themed movies, female cadres often carry lanterns and come to the bedside of the sleeping soldiers to tuck them in. Wu Maling imagined Duan Fang sleeping and especially wanted to tuck him in on Duan Fang's chin. This thought and this action were provocative, a bit unstoppable. Thinking of Cannon Hong lying on the rostrum, Wu Maling sighed and gave it up. A female cadre ran to the leader's side in the middle of the night. What is this? If spread out, it would cause unnecessary trouble to her future. People would think things happen to them. On the afternoon of the next day, Wu Manling just came back from outside and unexpectedly found that the brigade was empty, leaving only Duan Feng alone. Duan Fang squatted in the middle of the empty brigade, washing clothes in a wash basin. Wu Mali entered the door of the great hall, looked around, and said, Where are the people? Without raising his head, Duan Fang said, They went to practice assassination. Wu Mali said, Why didn't you go? Duan Fang said, Director Hong asked me to wash his clothes. Wu Mai walked up quickly, squatted down, and suddenly put her hand into the vigorous bowie foam. Wu Mai said, This cannon home, seriously, why let a big man wash? Unexpectedly, she grabbed Duan Fang's hand. All four hands were startled at the same time, all in the foam. None of them could be seen. Wu Mai chest suddenly felt a bump. The soap foam is really lovely, but the soap foam was not cute. It was so slippery that Duan Fang was startled, and his hand slipped out of Wu Mai Ling's palm. Wu Mai Ling didn't grab them again. It was unintentional just now. If she grabs again, it's intentional. It's not good. Duan Fang stood up, with both hands hanging there, ten fingers dripping water. But Duan Fang didn't go, just stood there. Wu Mali started her nervousness and rubbed the clothes in an exaggerated way. Milky white foam swirled everywhere. Wu Mali knew that once Duan Fang stood up, he would definitely leave. Before Wu Mali could sigh, unexpectedly, Duan Fang slowly but squatted down again. Wu Maling's heart suddenly reached her throat. She dared not to look, but could only stare at his knees, her hands still rubbing mechanically. Wu Maling's heart was suddenly moved. That's it. That's it. Two people squatting together, guarding the milky white form. That's it. But Wu Maling couldn't keep up with her breathing. She persisted for a long time and finally opened her mouth, and suddenly there was a sigh. Dun Fang said, Mai Ling. Wu Mai Ling stopped the movement of her hands. Little by little, her body straightened and lifted up. Wu Mai Ling was just looking at Dun Fang's hands at the corners of her eyes. The blood vessels on the back of his hands were bulging. The tips of his fingers were still dripping. The space of the brigade was enlarged at once, shaking, becoming more and more blurry and a little scary, while the silence of the brigade was shrunk and it was as small as a drop of water, which was quite terrifying. 
Wu Mailing never dared to move. She even dared not to move her eyes. If it were dark now, Wu Mailing thought she would rush over and she would definitely bury her head in Duan Fang's arms. Of course, this is just a bold idea of Wu Mailing. Wu Mailing also knew that if it were dark now, she still wouldn't dare to rush over. She was worried that Duan Fang would politely grab her two arms and put one hand on her left and the other on the right. There cannot be a second time for such a thing. Wu Mailing couldn't hold it anymore. Her shoulders loosened and her whole body softened, fortunately still squatting there. Wu Mailing said, Dun Fang, there's still something you still have to say. A guard soldier rushed in very recklessly. The butt of the gun slapped his ass behind him. Wu Mailing glanced at him. It was definitely too late to separate. It seemed that everything was still seen by him. Wu Mailing lifted Cannon Hall's clothes from the wash basin, pulled the collar, straightened it, and brought it to Duan Fang, saying loudly, the main thing is the collar. Director Hong is working hard and sweating a lot, so the collar must be rubbed hard. And the cops, see, you are so dumb. Wu Manling's calmness in the panic he even moved herself. She stood up and stumbled. Wu Manling smiled and said, Xiao Cheng, what are you busy with? Xiao Cheng took a brisk walk, stepped onto the rostrum, and lifted Cannon Hong's pillow. He raised a box of flying horse cigarettes above his head and shook it, shouting loudly, Director Hong is out of cigarettes! Xiao Cheng ran away. The butt of the gun slapped his ass behind him. The brigade is as big as the original brigade, and the brigade is as quiet as the original brigade. There is no longer the immense just now, nor the quietness just now. Wu Mailing believed in such a sentence. It can be met, but not sought. That moment was met by her, but that moment was no longer available. The soap foam met oil stains, and the foam turned into black, dirty water. No more foam, no more milky white, no more moving, cracking, and shattering sounds. Duan Fang was rubbing vigorously without raising his head. Now it was Wu Manling's turn to hang her hands down, her ten fingers dripping water. All ten fingers of Wu Manling cried. Live ammunition is, of course, the most exciting chapter of any military operation. Because it is exciting, it should be pressed at the end. And because it is useful, it is especially suitable for the ending. The location of the live ammunition exercise is located in the west of the river. Why choose the west? Quite simply, the north of the pig farm at the west of the river is a saline alkali land. This piece of saline alkali land is very abrupt. On the open, long, fertile, and lush northern Jiangsu land, it is like a scar on the head, and it categorically refuses any hair. Compared with the surrounding thousand hectares of green fields, a serene is slightly lower. During the flood season every year, the saline alkali land is filled with water and looks like a lake. In fact, it was so shallow that the water could not reach the knees. Not a single fish, not a single shrimp. After the flood season, its original appearance is exposed. Under the sunlight, the water disappears, but the bottom of the lake is white, as if a layer of frost has formed. The surface of the ground is also covered with patterns of tortoise shells, which are cracked and lifted up piece by piece, like rice crackers. The people in one village call them ghost rice crackers. They are ghosts' food. The saline alkaline land is the canteen of ghosts. This ghost canteen is big. It connects Wang village, Gao village, and Li village. In the early years, people had remodeled it, and the cadres and commune members of the three villages suffered a lot in order to transform this ghost canteen into a human canteen. 
but it didn't work. No matter how you remodel it, it's still wet. Not a grain of wheat will be given to you. Of course, the farmers in the three villages did not waste their efforts. Because of the transformation, the saline alkali land was made bumpy, a piece high and a piece low. They unwittingly built a good shooting range. The shooting range has one of the most basic requirements. It needs a high ground as a wall to keep the bullets in the wall. Otherwise, as soon as the gun sounds, do you know what the bullet will fly to Gao village or Li village? Such matters have never been approved by the County Civil Affairs Bureau. After a close reconnaissance, Cannon Hong settled his militia battalion in front of a mound. There were 10 targets in total. In other words, there were 10 shooting points in total. Behind the shooting point, crowded with young people from Wang Village. The young people from Wang Village all came, and it is not an exaggeration to say that they are all out. Who doesn't want to hear real gunshots? Cannon Hong wanted to drive them away, but couldn't. Cannon Hong was so anxious that the scar on his neck glowed red. Cannon Hong then gave in and ordered them to all lay down. They lay down, one head after another, exposed in the soil pit of the saline alkali land. Once settled, Cannon Hong dragged Wu Ling out of the soldiers. How did Wu Ling come here? It was actually her joke. She said that she also wanted to fire two shots. Otherwise, if a war really broke out, she couldn't be a cook. Cannon Hong praised her and gave her ten bullets on the spot. Thus, Wu Ling had no choice but to go, and not going would be disobeying the order. Wu Ling regretted so much that it was too late. She stood beside Cannon Hong, extremely nervous. Wu Ling thought that the seriousness and solemnity before the shooting turned out to be like this. Her right index finger kept trembling as if squeezing it in advance. The wind and the waves were calm, but it was all an illusion. There would be lightning and thunder, and the earth would shake immediately. The semaphore on the target site came over. This is the language of the flag, which ordinary people cannot understand. The semaphore is solemn, and there is no room for maneuvering in the way it speaks. Cannon Hong ordered the people around him to answer the semaphore also. Cannon Hong got to the ground. Wu Ling also got down. Cannon Hong took out the magazine, and with a click, the bullets were loaded. Wu Ling's mind was immediately empty. Boundless had followed her all the time, and now it was less than a yard away from her, and Wu Ling couldn't see it. Boundless was originally standing, but now it must have felt something and squatted down. The hind legs were on the ground, but the front legs were held high, legged on the left and legged on the right, staring into the distance. Wu Ling picked up the gun and was aiming. The young man in Wang village found that Cannon Hong had been keeping his hand above the barrel of the gun. It is necessary for him to do so. As long as the barrel doesn't go up, no matter where Wu Ling hits her bullet, as long as it doesn't fly into the sky, at least it's safe. The soil can never be broken or bombed. With a bang, Wu Ling squeezed her trigger. This sound was too loud, beyond the imagination of Wu Ling and all the young people in Wang village. Speaking of which, they are no strangers to gunfire, which movie doesn't have them. However, when they heard it with their own ears and felt it up close, it was different. Everyone felt like their ears were hit and the whole person was hit hard. The sound of gunshots reached the sky but was bounced back by the sky, which shocked the people again. The sound of gunshots is definitely not as simple as a bang, but a bang, bang, which is two sounds. The second sound was louder and more convincing. Everyone was shocked by the sound of the gunshot, and no one paid attention to the dog besides a woman Ling. Although at the same time as the gunshots sounded, Boundless 
jumped up. This jump is definitely beyond the limit of a dog. It is an unbelievable kind of high. It is the height of madness and the height of out-of-body soul. Boundless just landed from the air. Wu Mailing may have been stimulated by the first gunshot and panicked. Her fingers kept squeezing. The ten bullets of the 54 type semi automatic rifle were all taken out by her like a machine gun. Boundless forgot to escape. With the sound of gunfire, he kept jumping and falling in place. His figure was crazy. It wasn't until the last bullet was fired that Boundless was stunned for a while. And then he remembered that the vast world could be escaped. Boundless was like the eleventh bullet. It flew towards the pig farm. In the process of running wildly, Boundless tripped himself several times, and the huge inertia knocked over a lot of ghost rice crackers, and the dust was flying. Duan Fang was down behind the firing point. His mood was different from others. After all, he had been with Cannon Hong for some time, and he had a little selfishness. He was waiting. After the live ammunition was over, he wanted to ask Director Hong for a bullet, and he also wanted to fire a shot. Duan Fang had washed so many clothes and smelly socks for him, such a request was not excessive. It's always okay to get a rifle and play with it, although he can be a soldier. It was a surprise that Camel also came. He was lying on his stomach not far away, and because of his nervousness, he had already covered both ears together. After Wu Manling finished the shooting, a man emerged from the pit on the opposite side, a target reporter. He waved the flag in his hand solemnly, and Cannon Hong got up, put his hands on his waist, and laughed loudly. Cannon Hong said to Wu Manling, What's the matter? Not even one ring! Completely missed! The soldiers all laughed. Wu Manling didn't. Her face was already pale, and she hadn't recovered yet. It wasn't until the first group of soldiers got up from the ground that Wu Manling remembered her dog. Wu Manling said, Where's Boundless? Where's my dog? A soldier joked with Wu Manling and said, Secretary Wu, your dog is going to help you find your bullets. It will take a long time. Everyone laughed again. Cannon Hong turned his head, lowered his face, and ordered, Quiet! A group is ten people, or it can be said that a group is ten guns. Compared with Wu Manling's shooting just now, the sound of gunshots in the city in Alkali land now is more like gunshots. Fortunately, people's ears have adapted to it, and it is no longer a surprise. About the gunshot sounds, Wu Manling's gunshots are at best the actions of a rogue. They are lonely and sporadic. Now the real war begins. It's a sniper battle. The enemy charged again and again, and they wanted to escape from here. However, this is delusional. Shot after shot declared their defeat, declared their death. Duan Fang has seen dead bodies all over the place. His imagination is looking inward, and there's a movie in his heart. The content of this movie is people are with the territory. The gunshots are loud, and the air is fragrant. The smell of the gunpowder is getting stronger and stronger. This is the smell of war. It envelopes the saline alkali land, envelopes the plain of Lixia River, envelopes the heart of every young man. The smell of gunpowder is intoxicating. A long, thrilling sniper battle resulted in a glorious victory. All soldiers hit the target. As the song goes, every bullet kills an enemy. The enemy suffered heavy casualties. The soldiers put away their guns and set them aside. The setting is a signal that live ammunition is over. The soldiers came among the young people in one village and began to drive them away, getting them out of the saline alkaline land. Duan Fang stood there, not moving. How did it end like this? He didn't even fire a shot. 
Duan Fang's heart filled with infinite melancholy. How wonderful it would be for this war to last for ten or eight days. A soldier came to Duan Fang and said politely, Please step away. Duan Fang said angrily, It's over anyway. Why do you care where we stand? The soldier asked in turn, Who said over? The soldier said, Who said it's over? There are grenades. You lie behind us. How dangerous it is if someone gets it out of the hand. Duan Fang's good mood was suddenly mobilized. It was the joy of being overjoyed and being born out of desperation. It was simply a bonus. There are grenades. Duan Fang immediately helped the soldiers to clear the field. Duan Fang led the group to climb a small mound in the distance, and behind the small mound, they got down. In the distance, they saw Cannon Hong pry open an ammunition box. Cautiously, there are grenades all over there. In the evening sun, they glow darkly. Wu Mailing looked at the ammunition box, very frightened, smiled at Cannon Hong embarrassedly, and said, Director Hong, it looks like I'm going to be a deserter. Cannon Hong tightly held Wu Mailing's hand and shouted loudly, The battle is tense, don't send me, and I won't send you. I still need to command. You go back, go back, we are here. The explosion of the grenade is a real explosion. With a burst of fire, the earth shook. However, Duan Fang was disappointed to find that its power was far less powerful than in the movie. That's the way the movie is. When a grenade explodes, it uses a close-up shot. The whole picture is swirling corpses and swirling dirt with a hammer-on-tone effect. Not so in reality. Grenades don't have that massive, appalling kill space. It's only astonishing is the sound. But the mud it blew up is far from covering the sky. What Duan Fang yearns for is seas turning, wind changing, continents shaking, and world flipping. The grenade disappointed Duan Fang. However, no matter what, the grand and violent explosion still made Duan Fang's blood boil. He couldn't help himself. He's going to be a soldier. He still wants to be a soldier. Only when he is a soldier can he spend all day shooting and exploding. Duan Fang was on the ground and made up his mind secretly. He said to himself, Be nice to Secretary Wu. Be nice to Secretary Wu. Starting today, be really nice to Secretary Wu. Now this year, next year. Duan Fang's wish to fire a shot ultimately didn't come true. When the sun set, the sky above the sailing alkali land was filled with the gunpowder smoke, which accumulated in the air and was dyed red by the setting sun. The smell of the air had changed. It was no longer fragrant, but burnt. The earth suddenly fell silent, with tragic and unacceptable signs. The soldiers were in the distance, like a distant scene in the movie, quietly lined up, quietly resting, quietly standing at attention, quietly, column left, march. Duan Fang stood up. He looked into the distance. In the distance was a zigzag team, and they had already started to retreat. There was a sudden sadness in his heart. The voiceover from the movie sounded in his heart. The comrades are gone. The revolution is turned down. Duan Fang was a little worried. Why are they leaving? They are gone. What will happen to Wang village? So worried. The sky darkened, and Duan Fang's heart also darkened. He turned around, and instead of fighting for bullets with others, he stared at his own figure. His figure is long on a downhill. Duan Fang's figure is in danger of flowing and in the meaning of hard to catch the water. The setting sun also cast the shadow of gunpowder on the downhill. Duan Fang was sad and hesitant in the shadow. Camel said, Go back, it's time to feed them. 
Because of the live ammunition exercise, the village was actually empty. Every house is safe and secure. Every tree is safe and secure. The outer contours of these haystacks are particularly soft, and their soft lines fully reflect the situation of being occupied and liberated, soft and obedient. Occasionally. There are one or two women walking around in the village. They wear scarves on their heads and carry bamboo baskets under their armpits, looking like they are looking for trouble. It is also a situation of being occupied and liberated. In short, under the sun in the winter afternoon, there is a scene of peace and happiness, but also a scene of liveliness. Hard to say. After all, it is the end of the year, and the village at the end of the year is like this. There's an indescribable desolation, as if it is preparing and saving. Only when the new year comes can people rejoice. Of course, the situation changed immediately after the gunshots ran out, and one village was no longer deserted. The sound of gunfire was the order, and the poultry and livestock in the village came out and mobilized collectively, nervously. How can they understand the meaning of the gunshots? They don't understand. They are frightened, and their souls are scattered. They only shake, just jump in a blink. One village had no human look, and the livestock started to gallop, and all flying in the air were chickens, dogs, geese, and their feathers. One village suddenly became a world of animals, a world of birds and beasts. In a word. A world of madness, unprecedented, simply prehistoric. It has a prehistoric, tyrannical, and primitive atmosphere. Boundless returned to one village in such a chaotic scene, with hair all over his body. It looks bigger, taller, and stronger. Very powerful. It completely forgot that it was a dog. It was like a piece of meat with four legs. It was more like a bomb with hair whizzing in, then whizzing away. It has speed. Its speed is its direction. The endocrine in its body is exuberant. Crazy and fiery, its secret speed secrets its true nature. Its secrets outstanding, extraordinary, inestimable power. It secrets itself into a blinding mushroom cloud. It is a poisonous mushroom in bloom that can fly, shuttle, fission, and spray. It is dazzling, blinding, and thrilling. Before it arrived at Wang Village, Boundless passed by the pig farm. A large group of white and black piglets. Blocked its way. The endocrine guides Boundless, and the endocrine stirs it. Boundless opened its mouth. Its mouth and its sharp teeth picked up a piece of white meat at an incredible speed, bitten off. Before the black sow could react properly, Boundless had already pulled down the piglet's body and bit the black sow's leg. The black sow howled, trying to resist. However, motherhood is futile. The power of motherhood cannot resist the madness of endocrine. Boundless had no interest in entangling with it. It left the black sow and continued running wildly. It wants to make every tooth and every hair of itself a speed. It returned to the brigade headquarters and lay under Wu Manling's bed. Its pentagonal pupils shone brightly. Its pentagonal pupils were alert, aggressive, and panicked. It is anticipating. It is more than funding. Its anticipation is preoccupied, and its defense is even more preoccupied. The pentagonal pupils illuminate Boundless World, and every tooth is crystal clear and translucent. Boundless teeth are actively prepared. When someone comes in, it will open its mouth, pinch up and down, and each tooth will go into the human flesh very symmetrically. The black sow in the pig farm was bitten badly. She retreated to the wall and licked her wound like a brigade accountant counting money. Gunshots not far away came one after another, and there was an overwhelming momentum. The scarlet piglets were no longer in a mess at this time. They huddled together under the black sow's belly, trembling with the black sow's teeth. 
Duan Fang returned to the pig farm covered in gunpowder smoke. He leaned against the wall and lowered his head, feeling unspeakable melancholy in his heart. But found something on the floor, the little pig's trotter. White, glowing white. In the dim light of dusk, there were three in total. Duan Fang was stunned for a long time before confirming them. Once confirmed, he was fooled and had an extremely bad premonition. Looking up at the house, the house was full of pig trotters, pigtails, and the internal organs of piglets. The pig intestines are slender and long, dragging all over the place. The rest are all the corpses of the little piglets, and a few are still twitching. They are all over the place, laying on the ground, which can be said to be horrible. Duan Fang jumped into the house, and the black sow screamed and hid under camel's bed, leaving only a head outside. His eyes were like the two loopholes of semi-automatic rifles. Blue aimed at Duan Fang. The black sow's mouth was covered in blood, and she had a piglet's liver in her mouth and was chewing. Duan Fang's scalp went tight and numb, and he picked up the body of a piglet. His neck had been broken long ago, and his head was turned to one side. At this time, Camel entered the house, and he stood there, constantly looking at the ground. Sweat was all over his forehead. Camel is Camel after all, calmer than Duan Fang. He closed the door immediately and lit the lantern. The lantern illuminated the messy scene. Warm. Orange light infinitely softly lightened this tragic scene. The black sow was under the bed, but put down the liver. It seemed a fool and was no longer interested in the tender pork liver. It was very excited and nervous, and the bristles on its back stood up like a hedgehog. The black sow looked warily at Duan Fang and looked warily at Camel. His eyes were behind its big ears, and it was staring. There was a powerful light in its pupils, and its neck had already become a bellow, making low snoring. It was the sound of fear, and it was the sound of warning, one after another. Duan Fang suddenly felt a little scared. He had never seen such a scene, not even heard of it. He didn't know what the black sow was under Camel's back. Duan Fang was not sure. Duan Fang was frightened and took a step back. Camel grabbed him and said in a low voice, "Duan Fang, don't move, don't move." What happened? Camel said, "I'll tell you later. Just stare at it. Don't get distracted. Don't move under your feet." What shall we do? I'm going to get it out. You take the pole and point it at his head. It's the head. Be precise, fast, and hard. It's best to solve the problem at once. Don't let it bite. Remember? Yes. Camel picked up the stick on the ground, which was Duan Fang's stick to uphold justice. He bent and walked to one end of the bed. Duan Fang held the pole tightly and was ready. Camel poked the black sow with the small stick. But the black sow didn't move. There was a howl in her throat, which was shrill. Camel then poked hard. The black sow still didn't move. Camel crawled onto the bed and tore down the boards one by one. At this time, the black sow moved. It was going backward. Its ass was against the wall. Duan Fang pushed up little by little. Camel heard a hoo in his ear, and the wind swayed on Camel's oracle. Causing a chill, Duan Fang's pole has been swung down. Duan Fang's pole splashed on the top of the black sow's head, accurately. Almost at the same time, a lot of sticky things splashed out on the wall and on Duan Fang and Camel's bodies and faces. Very fishy. Duan Fang wiped his face. Part of it was red. The other part was milky white, like glue, more like paste. It could only be the brain fluid. The black sow's head had been opened, but its body stood in place, stood up for a moment, and then collapsed.
It spit it out a small piece of pork liver from its mouth, but its hind legs were kicked straight against the wall. It trembled a few times, leaving the last scratch on the wall. The house fell silent again. It's all Duan Fang's breathing. In fact, on this day at the end of 1976, the bad luck was far from over. It was the dog named Boundless that drove the night. It bit Wu Mailing eventually. It was Wu Mailing's calf. The bite was not light. The flesh on Wu Mailing's calf was turned over. After biting Wu Mailing, Boundless was no longer like Boundless. He was manic and restless and could not settle down for a second. No one knew exactly what Boundless looked like at this time. It had developed a strong love for everyone's thighs and calves and can be said to be infinitely obsessed with it, biting everyone it sees. Of course, because of the example of Wu Manling, one village prepared, did effective prevention. In addition to Wu Mailing, it at least never bit anymore. It was blind Wang that is very knowledgeable. He came to the brigade headquarters. He decided to kill Boundless viciously. Blind Wang said, This thing can no longer be kept. I have seen it. Kill it immediately. Otherwise, days of trouble are ahead. Guang Li was still hesitant. No matter what, it was still sacred to Wu's dog. Guang Li said, It's better to ask Secretary Wu. Blind Wang said, No need. She was bitten like that, and her own pain can be taken care of. What can she say? You guys beat, and then I'll give Secretary Wu the message. Wang village people responded to the words of Blind Wang. The old saying, See the owner before hitting the dog, can no longer be listened to indeed can no longer be obeyed. With the current appearance of Boundless, it bites people without looking at them. How can people look at its owner? The people were out in full force with their poles and holes. At nightfall, a mass movement was finally carried out. One village spread a dragnet. After dark, Boundless was forced into a dead-end alley and Guang Li used his fishnet to cover Boundless. Guang Li lifted the net up and smashed it a few times, and Boundless fainted instantly, nearly dead. Of course, the people of Wang village are aware that the dog is earthy, and as soon as it touched the earth, it would come back to life. Guang Li still accepted blind Wang's advice and hand Boundless, hanging on the acacia tree in front of the brigade department. A group of people surrounded Boundless. People smashed its head with poles and holes. They smashed it massively. Smashed for well. Boundless head almost disappeared, turned into crumbs and liquid. The people of one village were then relieved. A dog lost its head will not be able to return to its soul in any case. It had long since gotten dark, and there was still some of the smell of the smoke in the air. However, it is getting thinner and thinner. This night in Wang village is still different from other days, a little bit not like a night. Why? Wu Mailing's wounds were so painful that she forgot to turn on her tweet. What is night? It has a saying in Wang village which begins with the Central People's Broadcasting Stations, the East is Red, and ends with the Central People's Broadcasting Stations, International. Only when the International sounded off, the day is officially over. When can people blow the lamp to bed? The center's such arrangement is extremely scientific. It can remind every commune member of the one village should be mindful of the motherland, should be looking at the world. It is also a symbol that one village is actually linked to the motherland and the world. If you forget, listen to the East is Red and the International, then everything will be fine. 
because there's snow the east is red and the international. Duan Fang lost his reference when he was in bed. He was forgotten by time, he was forgotten by the world, and he was forgotten by his motherland. However, Wang village did not forget him. At nine o'clock in the night, maybe ten, maybe eleven, Hong Ti suddenly kicked open the door of the small hut. With a loud bang, both Duan Feng and Camel were frightened and woke up from their sleep. Hong Ti's face could not be seen, but his voice spoke of his panic. Something has happened in Wang village. Hong Ti almost shouted, Duan Feng, Branch Secretary Wu is calling you! What's up? Duan Feng said with his head blindly closed. I don't know, she's calling you. How late is it? What time is it? Hong Ti didn't let Duan Feng stay in bed for long. He got bold and actually pulled Duan Feng up from the bed sheet. Duan Feng put on his clothes and pants and didn't even have time to pull on the heels of his shoes before Hong Ti dragged him out the door of the thatched hut. The winter starlight was incomparably dim, rather like a ghost fire in summer. Duan Fang followed Hong Ti as he darted all the way, running all the way, saying, Why hurry? Hong Ti said, Hurry, Duan Fang, you hurry up! Duan Fang followed and asked sternly, What is it? Hong Ti said, Hurry up, I don't know, but Secretary Wu is just calling for you. Before Duan Fang and Hong Ti arrived at the brigade headquarters, they heard Wu Manling's sharp shout from a distance. Hong Ti was right. She was shouting Duan Fang. Her voice was particularly poignant, fuzzy, and clear. From the sound, it seems that Secretary Wu is fighting with someone. Duan Fang sprinted over, and a lot of people gathered at the gate of the brigade. It's so late, and there are so many people. It looks like something big must have happened. Wu Manling's house was in a mess, and the lights of the whole lamp flickered. Duan Fang pushed the people away and squeezed into the house. Guang Li and Jin Long pressed Wu Manling to the floor. Wu Manling's hair was disheveled, and she struggled violently on the ground, very wild and aggressive. Duan Fang was angry with a glance, stretched out two hands, grabbed Guang Li and Jin Long, and lifted them away. Wu Manling shouted sharply, Duan Fang! Duan Fang squatted down and said, Manling, it's me. Wu Manling seemed not to hear it and screamed again, Duan Feng! Duan Feng ruffled the messy hair on Wu Manling's forehead and said, Manling, it's me. Wu Manling looked at Duan Feng and suddenly went quiet. Her gaze forced its way straight over like two transparent sticks. Wu Manling said, Duan Feng? Duan Feng said, I am Duan Feng. Wu Manling's gaze was extremely soft, and her eyes began to smile, smiling with affection and ferocity. Her face smiled as well, but it was different from her euro self, without any content. As there was no content, it could be described as purely bright or menacing and couldn't be stopped. Duan Fang felt bad, turned his head and shouted angrily, Prepare the boat! Call Xin Long! Send her to the hospital! Duan Fang had just finished speaking, but before he could turn his head, Wu Manling suddenly trembled, trembling so much that all the joints of her body showed it, while her hair looked like it had been soaked in water, showing signs of floating or even flying. Duan Fang had seen people trembling, but had never seen such a way of trembling and wanted to press her down but couldn't. He even heard her teeth clattering. Wu Manling suddenly grabbed Duan Fang, wrapping her arms around Duan Fang's neck, tightening it tightly, and biting Duan Fang's neck. All her teeth were stuffed into Duan Fang's flesh. I caught you! Wu Manling's mouth covered Duan Fang's skin tightly and said vaguely, Duan Fang, I finally caught you!